Hello, welcome to our virtual anatomy lab. Today we will take a look at the convex concave rule. Okay, first let's take a look at some basic definitions. When a convex object is moving on a concave object, the roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions. Now, concave moving on convex, the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. And now let's take a closer look at some real life examples. Here is a convex example first. An example here is shoulder abduction. The head of the humerus is convex, moving on a shallow, concave glenoid. The roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions of one another. Hence, with an upper extremity elevation, the humeral head will roll in a superior direction and glide in an inferior direction. Okay, so here you can see a superior roll of the humeral head. Now, let's pause for a second. Can you see that there is no space under the subacromial arch? Yes, so if the humeral head will keep migrating up, it would start impinging on the structures located in the subacromial space. It will start creating inflammation and later degeneration of the muscular tendinous junction of the supraspinatus. Now, take a look at the space around the inferior portion of the glenoid. The bones have to be congruent in order to, to keep the axis of rotation centered. So, to keep the bones aligned, the humeral head has to perform a conjunct inferior glide. There you go. Now, this is an example of a concave articular surface moving on a convex surface. And remember that the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. A classic example would be tibia femoral joint open kinematic chain flexion, or in layman's terms, where the tibia moves on top of the femur. The proximal tibia is concave and the distal femur is convex. So the roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. Tibia will be rolling posterior and gliding posterior as well. Here is a concave tibia moving on the convex femur. If arthrokinematically, there is only a posterior roll occurring, the tibia will sit too far anteriorly and will probably irritate the anterior joint structures. Also, once again, there is all that space around the distal femur that has to be occupied. So we need a conjunct posterior glide to keep the tibia aligned with the femur. That is it for the convex concave roll. But remember that the convex concave roll creates the basic foundation to understanding any joint mechanics and will drive you a step closer to being a great movement specialist. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.